All right, here's an explanation of how to work with normal curves. First of all, normal curves are a way to describe what uh, the distribution looks like for many, many items or many, many people. And normal curves are bell-shaped, and they are centered at the average and the median and the mode. Uh, we use them typically to describe things that happen in the natural world. And uh, things like height, weight, uh, IQ, how fast something is. We can also use them to describe things that are not natural, like uh, the lifespan of certain products. So here's an example using refrigerators. And the average lifespan of a refrigerator is 17 years. That doesn't mean that all refrigerators will stop working after 17 years, of course. Um, a way to explain about how reliable the product is is by using the standard deviation. With a standard deviation of three years, it means that most products or most refrigerators will last between 14 and 20 years. In fact, about 68% of refrigerators, if this is true, will last between 14 and 20 years. If we go another three standard deviation, another uh, standard deviation in both directions, we would get uh, between 11 and 23 years out of the great majority of refrigerators. About 95% of all refrigerators last that long. If we go another one standard deviation in both directions, you pretty much get every single refrigerator according to this. 99.7% of refrigerators will last in that, in that uh, span of time right there. So that's called the 68, it's nicknamed the 68 95, 99.7 rule. It's also called the empirical rule. And these are just ways to talk about the normal curve. And those aren't exact percentages, but pretty rough estimates to the exact percentage. If we want to get actually more detail, we could use a graphing calculator to uh, generate some of these percentages for us. So what if I'm interested in finding out what percentage of refrigerators fail to last 15 years? What I could use is um, a graphing calculator along with this normal curve to figure out the percentage of refrigerators that won't make it 15 years. What I'm interested in is figuring out how much area is underneath this curve. The entire area under the curve is 100%. If I'm trying to find out what percentage of refrigerators won't last 15 years, I want to find out how much area is underneath that curve or what percent of that curve is shaded in that zone. So I'll use the normal calculator command on the calculator. It's found underneath the VARS button. And to get there, we press second VARS which brings up the distribution menu. So pressing those two buttons gives me some options. I'm looking for the option that says normal CDF. We'll never use the PDF button. That's to draw an actual normal curve. But I'm interested in the area that's between negative a thousand years to 15 years. When typing into the graphing calculator, the first number you type in is the minimum amount that you're looking for, and the second number is the maximum. When we're talking about minimums, we could use zero, but typically we use a very large negative number just to make the answer as accurate as possible, and it's um, what we usually do when we type, type these into the calculator as a habit. The next two numbers are the mean and the standard deviation. Once those numbers are in place with commas in between, all we would do then is just hit enter and we get about 25%. Which actually looks very accurate in the picture above. Yeah, about 25% of that curve is actually shaded. You could also use the graphing calculator to figure out the percentage of refrigerators that last longer than a certain amount. So suppose we're interested in um, percentage of refrigerators that last 21 years or longer, that'd be a very long 
uh, lifespan for a refrigerator. It would be a good run for a refrigerator. So uh, we could use normal CDF again. This time we were going to be talking about getting a certain amount of life out of our refrigerator or more years. So a TV la or a refrigerator lasting 21 to 1,000 years. I know it can't last 1,000 years, but we just pick a ridiculously large number for the maximum there. Um, if you do that, you end up getting about 9% on your calculator, which does match the picture pretty well in terms of how much space is shaded under the curve. You can also use normal CDF to figure out the percentage between two values. So suppose we want to know what percentage of refrigerators last between 15 and 21 years. We're trying to figure out that percentage right there. Again, we could use normal CDF with 15 being the minimum to 21 years using 17 as the average and 3 as the standard deviation. Typing that in gives you about 66% and that looks pretty darn accurate to what we see here, about 66%. Quite a bit of the, of the graph is shaded below and if you add these together um, it actually does come out to be 100% of the graph, so the entire graph is shaded there with those three questions. Moving on to the next topic, let's talk about the same information but in reverse. Suppose we were interested in uh, the amount of lifespan in the worst 20% of refrigerators. In other words, I know that the area under the curve is 20%. It looks about 20%, percent point twenty or 20%. The area under the curve is 20%, and I want to know what value would be on the border of those cheap refrigerators and the ones that actually last longer. Um, I could use a different command on the calculator. It's still pressing the same buttons on the calculator, the second buttons, the second button and the virus button brings you up the list of distribution choices and you're going to choose inverse norm. So it's doing things in an inverse sort of way, inverted sort of way, a backward sort of way. We know the percentage is 20 percent, but what we want is we want to know what value would place us there. So when you're typing this in, it's the percentile, the percentage to the left, the average and the standard deviation in that order. If you do that on the calculator you get about fourteen and a half. And that would be years. Inverse norm will tell you the value that's on the x-axis. So if a, if a refrigerator lasts fourteen and a half years or less that puts them in the bottom twenty percent of all refrigerators. If we flipped it around and took a look at the top, um, you know what what type of refrigerator am I talking about that puts me in the top one percent of all refrigerators? So suppose I want to be up here in the top one percent. That looks like about one percent of the entire graph is shaded right there, which would mean that to the left. I've got 99% of the refrigerators, since this isn't the top 1%. And I have to keep that in mind when you're talking about being at the top 1%, that I'm going to put the percentile first. That means that it is lasting longer than 99% of all the other refrigerators, which puts me at about 24 years when I type it into the calculator. All right, so one last topic here in the video to cover would be on z-scores and the standardized normal curve. So what I did here is I, I have our original graph right here, which is the graph for the re uh, refrigerator lifespan being normal curve with 17 as the average and 3 as the standard deviation. 
What I have included is another graph of another product, refrigerators. And refrigerators, an average refrigerator lasts a lot less, about nine years, and the standard deviation is 1.5 um, years. So with a smaller standard deviation, you can see what that does to the graph is it makes the distribution tighter because more refrigerators are actually uh, between um, a shorter lifespan. So to indicate that, I've actually drawn the curve a little bit higher than the last one where the last one, the standard deviation was twice as long, so the graph is actually spread out twice as far. All right, so what does this have to do with z-scores and standardized normal curves? Well, uh, well, one thing for sure is that there's two curves. And, geez, wouldn't it be a lot easier if we could actually take those two curves and condense it to just one single curve? So what I can do is I can make one normal curve and place both of those products on the same curve. And I'm going to pick the most simplest normal curve that I can, a normal curve where 0 is the mean and 1 is the standard deviation. This is the standardized normal curve, and it's used for a few different reasons in statistics. But probably the, its biggest power is that it takes any normal curve and snaps it into this common ground where it's very easy to label the x-axis. And we can also talk about two different situations in the same, in the same curve, which gives us a way to compare. Uh, two different situations. So the example I've been giving in class is which is more impressive. Is it more impressive to have a dishwasher that lasts 15 years Or is it more impressive to have a refrigerator that lasts 24 years? Now you could use the original graphs here to actually see um, which one might be more impressive and maybe get an idea of which one is the better product. You could also use normal CDF to figure out the percentiles for both of these products to figure out what percentage of dishwashers has this 15-year-old dishwasher beaten and also which percentage of the refrigerators has this refrigerator actually been ahead of. Uh, one thing we can also do, which is actually simpler and um, nice and convenient, is to use a formula for the Z-score. A z-score is the number of standard deviations you are away from the average. So the z-score is the number of standard deviations. And here's the formula. x is the actual score minus the average divided by the standard deviation. So for the dishwasher, a dishwasher lasting 15 years, how many standard deviations is the dishwasher above 9? Here's the average of 9. How many standard deviations would be 15? Well, we could follow the formula to figure that out. So as far as the dishwasher goes, the z-score would be 15 years, take away 9, divided by 1 and a half, which is actually 4 standard deviations above the average. We could take this and find it on the standardized normal curve. So a z-score of 4 puts us way over here in really great shape for that for that dishwasher. That dishwasher really lasted very very long. It's very rare for something like that to happen especially with how things are made these days. Uh, if we did the same work with the refrigerator and followed the same formula. 24 years was the actual length of how long it lasted, minus 17, divided by the standard deviation, which was 3, puts us at 2 and a third for its z-score, which 
And that's actually quite an impressive run as well to be two and a third standard deviations above the typical or the average uh, lifespan of a refrigerator. But as you can see here, now that we've placed things together on this standardized normal curve, you get a better view that um, although both of them are impressive, uh, this dishwasher has lasted uh, well beyond what was expected. And uh, hopefully this little um, conversation here or this, this video can actually help you uh, get started, but also as a good reminder of some of the basics that you, you can use the graphing calculator for. And also very importantly to mention that this is without using a graphing calculator, just using this little formula here, we get some valuable information and uh, we don't need computers to help us after all.